creation. Father God, you are a God of love. And Father God, you deserve love in return because you shed the love, love of God abroad in our heart by the Holy Spirit. And Father God, we want to love on you, Father God, the way you should be loved, like a, like a child would love their parent. So Father God, we come to worship you, to serve you, to submit into you, spirit, soul, and body. Father, your word says in James, or, yeah, yeah, James 4, 7, submit unto God. So Father God, we submit unto you, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, and the word of God. Now, Satan, we resist you in Jesus' name and every one of your manifestations and all your curse in the name of Jesus. And dear Lord Jesus, we thank you, sir, for being our Savior, for being our Lord, healer, redeemer, deliverer, baptizer, and Holy Ghost, our soon coming King. We worship you, sir. We exalt you. We submit unto you, Lord Jesus Christ, because you're the head and part of your body. So as you direct the Spirit this day, according to John 16, John 16, 13, you said, how be it when he, the spirit of truth, is coming, he would lead us and guide us into all truth, and he would show us things to come. So we thank you, Father, for revelation knowledge in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father God. The Holy Spirit is the illuminator. He's a revealer. So, Father God, we just desire to understand your word, to know your word. And, Father God, by knowing your word and your ways, we know you, Father God, and our Lord Jesus Christ, your character, your characteristics, Father God, in the name of Jesus. We come to know more who you are as you reveal yourself, Father God, through your word and our Lord Jesus Christ. So, Father, we do cover the best gifts today, 1 Corinthians 12, 31, and we desire spiritual gifts, 1 Corinthians 14, 1, in the name of Jesus. And Holy Spirit, you may move and manifest yourself severally as you will. And, Father God, I ask you to cause my tongue, as the prophet of old said in 45, 1, be that of a ready writer. That my speech and teaching might, might not be with enticing words of men's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Holy Ghost and power. And, Father, we thank you and praise you now in Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. Praise the Lord. Whew. Anyway, before before I get to my message, there's something I've been impressed to start with. So I'm, I, sometimes I take side journeys, little rabbit tracks before during my messages. That's just the way the Lord uses me. But uh, it's, I'm going to talk a little bit about the anointing before I get into my message. And uh, I want to encourage you because when you the heat, the anointing is here. It's here every Sunday. And you can receive and grab on that anointing. And I, I'm a, you know, I, I learned years ago, when, and uh, thank God for Brother Hagen and different ministers like that. But I learned when I was going to school, even uh, my first year, at the end of the first year, Brother Hagen would always shake hands with all the students and, and sister Aretha also. But that one that, that they were passing through, and I'm back in the line a little bit, and I thought to myself, I need a touch. I need a healing from God. <laughs> so as I walked up, he shook my hand. I, I received by faith in Jesus' name. He looked at me kind of strange. Like he knew something happened. I'm going, oh dear Lord, I'm in trouble now. But what, what I'm getting at, see, if you have a need, even if you don't ask for prayer, you can still touch on the material because the anointing is storable. It's, it stores. Like in Jesus' clothes, remember Acts, Mark chapter 5 and Acts 19, Paul's uh, aprons and, and cloths. So the anointing is around. So all you have to do, you know, is just grab a hold. Say it's mine. I take it now. It belongs to you. God, God wants every one of us set free. Jesus paid a horrible price that we might be totally free from every, not only sickness and disease, but malfunctions of the body, things that don't work the way they're supposed to work. God designed the body perfectly as the way it's supposed to work. So, and Jesus paid the price so it will work. So uh, we need to grab a hold of that. So, I mean, God is, God is a God of love, and he's made so many things available to us and thank God for good doctors and medicine and hospitals. That's not God's highest. It's not God's best. But God will work through hospitals and doctors and prayer. Thank God for that. Amen. But uh, I just want to encourage because the anointing is transferable. It's transmittable. It means it's perceptive to the touch. It's also, it means that we can flow from one person to another, just like electricity. I think John G. Lake said that electricity is God's power in the natural but the anointing is God's power in the supernatural. If you know anything about electricity, I don't know that much about it. But I know there are certain things that are conducive to metals that would cause electricity to flow through it. Some aren't. But if we're a good receiver, a good receptor, that when you need something, just say it's mine. I take it now. Just draw it. Get it. It, be it belongs to you. I, I just want to encourage you. God, God wants all of us where we're supposed to be designed well and whole and restored and everything else. So in Jesus' name, I just uh, want to put that out this morning because... If we went back to the woman with the issue of blood, Mark chapter 5, and uh, you can read what happened to her. She, she kept saying, if I can but touch the hem of his garment. See, and if you believe the anointing is here, if you believe that I'm anointed, 
And if you don't, it won't do you any good. So, you know, you don't try me out. No, it, doesn't, it won't work that way. But uh, uh, Mark, or Luke chapter 16, verse 17 through 19, I believe it is, where when Jesus was preaching and teaching over there, they, they sought to touch him again. Uh, Mark, Matthew chapter 14. And I believe it's Mark, Ma Matthew 14, if I can find it real quick. Uh, 34 through 36. Again, people, when they heard, they brought the sick and they desired to even touch him. He couldn't lay hands on everybody. But as many got near him, in fact, the woman with the issue of blood, there was a multitude of people. That means like about like minimum of 5,000 people there. Only one person got it. Now, why was that? One person's faith. Faith receives. Faith not only says, faith does. Faith is an action. It means it requires you to do something. So when we act on faith, we draw it by faith. God, see, without faith, it's impossible. Please, God, Hebrews 11, 6. Is that right? Those that come to God must believe he is and reward those that diligently seek him. Well, see, God has these blessings for us. A lot of times we think, well, you know, if, if God wants to do it, he'll do it. Oh, dear Lord in heaven. And I've heard so many throughout the years, and not only ministers say it, but I've heard people say that, you know, if God wants me healed, he'll get me there. He'll get me healed. If he wants me that certain place, he'll get me there. No, if you don't put any effort out, you ain't going to do nothing. That's bad, that bad English, I guess, dear. Should say anything, <clears throat> but but I remember years ago when we, we first got in the charismatic before we were baptized in the Holy Ghost. We were at a meeting up in Saint Saint Mary's uh, is it, in Rockford there, where the Lutherans and Catholic charismatics were together. And I heard some of these young people saying, "Well, you know," and they were baptized in the Holy Ghost, but they didn't know anything about anything really. Well, if God wants me that next meeting, He'll get me there. Who's going to try to keep you away from there? The devil. And if you listen to him, you won't get there. So, again, faith requires an action because does God want you there? Or, is the word going forth? Yeah. Is that no power there? Yeah. If it's, it's of God, he would want you there. It doesn't take too much to figure it out. But, again, and I don't, I'm not trying to be mean, but through, through uh, religion, some religious thinking, religious thinking, I guess, and a lot of us, because we came out of mainline churches, some have some of those traits yet or those ideas that go along with things. Thank God I never had a whole lot of training in religion, <clears throat> even though I was a Presbyterian for 14 years. Uh, and I, I still, I mean, thank God, uh, I, I do remember when I was a teenager, we had to go to class and, and we had to have, go through Bible study. And, and I don't remember ever accepting Jesus then. You don't remember me saying that, but I know that I was baptized in water after one of those classes and stuff. And uh, then as a Lutheran, going to Lutheran, I don't remember saying anything about much, but or, or the Catholic Church. But it's, religion, as long as you're baptized in water and a member of that church, you're in good standing, you go to heaven. That's not how it works. But that's what, that's what religion, see, that didn't start till 300 AD. That was never that way in the beginning. We have some scriptures here. Let's go to Galatians real quick. I'll try to get to my message here. But I know you all you all know this, but there, there's people listening, and but still it's good to have these things put brought back to our attention. Because people are going to ask you, and people have, have uh, an assumption that because they go to church, they're a good person. Uh, but see, the Bible says your righteousness is as filthy rags in Isaiah. So it's not on your own merits. It's not on your own works. It's what, what God has done for you by you accepting what God has already provided for us. Again, in the old, in the old covenant, you, the, every male had to be circumcised in the flesh after eight days. That was, that was, if you weren't, you were not part of the covenant. The New Testament in, in Philippians, or Romans chapter 2, verse, the last two verses, 28 and 29, where it says you're circumcised in the heart well, how do you get circumcised in the heart? Well, we'll get to that here in a few moments. <clears throat> Galatians chapter 1, starting with verse 3. Grace, grace to you and peace from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from the present evil age according to the will of God and Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who has called you into the grace of Christ to a different gospel. There is no other gospel, he says. 
But there are some who would trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you than what we have already preached to you, let him be a curse or an anthema. There's only one gospel. That's in the word of God. And we'll get to what the gospel is. And some people think, well, it's just Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Those are the gospels. But the, Jesus, did you ever realize who got mad at Jesus? The religious people. The ones that had access to the covenant of God, the ones that should have been teaching and proclaiming the word of God, were not doing it. Oh, they taught certain things of the law that you can't work on a Sabbath day, and there's certain things you got to do. You, you know, you had to tithe, you had to bring in first fruits, and you had to make certain offerings and stuff. You couldn't come to God empty handed. But, and he had the Ten Commandments there, you know, that if, but if, again, if you go back to this, Go back to the Old Testament, the Old Covenant, and Romans Romans fifteen four says these things that were written beforehand were written for our learning. Well, God told Israel through Moses that if you'll obey me and all my statutes and all my laws, then none of these things will befall you. No sickness and disease will hang on you. No person will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. That's Old Covenant. Now, why are we in the new covenant, Hebrews 8 and 6, who have a better covenant, don't think that way? That God will, in fact, in, 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 in Exodus 23, he said, I'll send my angel before you. Well, we know Hebrews 1 14, we have ministering angels that are sent to minister to us for us. Most people don't know how to loose them, they don't know they're there for them. So, what, and people say, well, why does God allow this to happen? God has given us his word, the name of Jesus, the power of the Holy Ghost, has given us ministering angels. But yet if we don't use everything that God has provided for us, the Bible says the weapons of our warfare, 2 Corinthians 10, 4 and 5, are not carnal, but mighty through God, the pulling down and casting out of strongholds, casting out every vain imagination and thought that's contrary to the word of God. But see, religion has got in there and got put people, if you do these things, you're okay. If you do this, then you belong to us. But if you don't belong to our group, you're not in it. If you don't, if you don't belong to our group, you can't get communion. No. If you're not born again, you should not be receiving communion. Hello? That's the only stipulation that I have and what the Word of God has. It's not if you join the church or are baptized in water that I baptize you in water. That doesn't make you a believer. Well, whether you have accepted Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, then you're eligible to receive communion, which we will have a little later on. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, <clears throat> Paul said then again, verse 10, For do I not persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I still please men, I would not be bondservant of Christ. And he, and he goes on in chapter 3, saying again, O oh, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified? In other words, he preached Christ, him and the cross, what he did for us on the cross, what happened after the cross, all the things God provided for us. Are you so foolish, having, verse 3, having begun the Spirit? Are you now made perfect in the flesh? Have you suffered so many things in vain, if indeed it was in vain? Therefore, he who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law or tradition of men or by the hearing of faith? Just as Abraham believed God, it was accounted to him for righteousness. Therefore, know that not only those who are of faith are the, those who are of faith are the sons of God. For well, the scriptures foreseeing God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preach the gospel to Abraham before him, saying, in, all, in, in you all the nations shall be blessed. So then those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abraham. Abraham believed God, what God said. And when Moses came along, the, the law came along, God gave Moses the law. And of course, if you remember how it happened, Moses went up on Mount Sinai. God wanted him up there. And, and, and Joseph went up part way with him, but he couldn't go all the way up. But anyway, he was up there for 40 days and 40 nights. He didn't eat, didn't drink. His body was totally sustained by God. God gave him the Ten Commandments. Not only that, it didn't take God 40 days to write the Ten Commandments, put the finger of his hand. Moses wrote the first five books of the Bible, the Pentateuch. 
But when God finally said <clears throat> to Moses, you better go down because your people, that's <laughs> Moses' people, they're rebelling. <laughs> so he goes down. He sees what they're doing. And it, God performed the 10 miracles in Egypt, part of the Red Sea, drowned Pharaoh and all of his crew were after them, provided for them. And then when Moses didn't show up for 40 days, they're going to make another God. A golden calf. I don't. I, I, you know, of course, Aaron was afraid, so Aaron, Aaron went along with it. Why? Why? What do you think that any uh, an idol is going to do for you? Well, in most idols, like in some of the Oriental religions, when they worship different things, you know, there's there's a spirit behind it, but it's a demonic spirit. <laughs> you remember, remember, uh, Karate Kid, Mr. Miyagi. That's demonic forces. But anyway, <clears throat> but God has, God has provided all these things for you and I. So he, he, and the gospel has not changed, but man has tried to change the gospel. Remember, Jesus said in Matthew 15 and Matthew, Mark chapter 7, because the tradition of men, tradition of men, you've nullified the word of God, you've made it of none effect. Well, we have people out there continually, people that, Love, love, would like to love God or think they do love God, want to know more of God. They think because they're baptized in water, go to church, they're going to make it to heaven. If you would ask them, are you going? Most of them, I, I believe 99% would say, I hope so. I don't know. But see, if you're a believer, you receive a new spirit within you, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. If, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. I think it's a uh, Moffat's translation says one that never existed before. So in other words, he places a new spirit within you. Remember Paul said, Romans 7, 9, I was alive once. The law came in and what? I died. Now, he didn't die physically. He died the same way Adam did when Adam sinned. God said, the day that you eat of that fruit, that's the day you're going to die. Well, Adam didn't, Adam didn't die physically that day, but he died spiritually. Spiritual death is separation from God, taking on Satan's nature. For years, I've heard in the church people talk about this, the Adamic nature. No, it's not Adam's nature. It's sata satanic nature. <clears throat> but anyway, let's, let's go to uh, some scriptures to show what we have here. Right? I can get my notes together, get back, on, get back on track. So when we teach and preach the word of God, line upon, in fact, okay, hold your place here. Let's go back to uh, Isaiah, chapter 28, starting with verse 9. Whom will he teach knowledge? Whom will he make understand the message? Those just weaned from milk, question mark, that are just drawn from the breast, for it must be precept upon precept, uh, line upon line, here a little, there a little. For with stammering lips and other tongue, I speak to this people, yet in all this they still won't obey me. Well, what did Peter say in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2 and 3? Desire the sincere milk of the word that what? You may grow thereby. Well, if every church was at least preaching milk, they would have salvation. They would have the, they would have the new birth. That's, that's, but see, but see if, you're not, if you're not growing from <clears throat> what you've gotten there, you're not even getting, some people say, well, we just, we're just getting milk. If you're not growing, you're not getting milk. And from milk, you're supposed to go to solid food. That's why Paul said in 1 Corinthians 3, I couldn't feed you meat now because of your carnality. Well, there's envy, division, strife among you. He said, are you not yet carnal? <clears throat> he went on to say, uh, in, uh, back up to uh, 1 Corinthians. Chapter 5, verse 14. Uh, let's start with verse 9. God who is faithful by who you were called in the fellowship with his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now I plead to you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, that there be no divisions or schisms or divisions among you, that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgments. Well, if we're teaching and preaching the word of God, you should all be the same. 
Verse 11, for it has been declared to me concerning you, my brethren, by, the, by Chloe's household, that there are contentions or divisions or arguments among you. Now I say this, each one of you says, I am of Paul, I'm of Apollos, I'm of Cephas, I'm of Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius. That's the name which you say that I baptize you in my own name. Yes, I have baptized the household of uh, Cephas also. Besides, I don't know whether I have baptized any. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, with, not with the wisdom of words, lest any but the cross of Christ should be made of no effect, but by the same measure the message of Christ is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise and where is the scribe? Where, where of this age? Has God not God made the foolishness of wisdom? Has God not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For since in wisdom of God, the world through wisdom did not know God, it pleased God through his, the foolishness of message preached to save those who believe. So again, Romans 10, 8, 9, and 10. The word is near you. It's in your mouth. You can say it. You can do it. If you believe in your heart, number one, confess with your mouth. Number two, then thou shalt be saved. Okay. Let's go back to uh, Acts. I'm showing you what was done in the early church. And we're still in the book of Acts, whether people know that or not. There's no conclusion to the book of Acts. Acts chapter 8, remember an a, a evangelist named Philip. He was a deacon, along with Stephen, before Stephen got martyred. <clears throat> And uh, where are we at here? Okay, after, well, let's, let's start with verse. Uh, well, after, okay, verse, top of the verse, but verse 3, after, verse 3 says, Paul was making havoc in the church at every house, dragging men and women out, co committing them to prison. And those who were scared, were, those who were scared, were preaching the word. Then Philip was sent down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ to them. The multitudes with one accord had heard the things that Philip said, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits crying with a loud voice came out of many. That's part of the gospel. Those who were possessed with many who were paralyzed were, and the lame were healed. And they were all, with, there was great joy in the city. And of course, we're going to not read all that, but you should. Let's go, let's go back now to verse uh, uh, 30. Well, let's, let's, verse 29. Then the Spirit said to Philip, Go near and overtake this, this that, that chariot. So Philip ran uh, next and heard, heard uh, him, this guy, the uh, eunuch, reading the, the prophet Isaiah, and said, Do you understand what you were reading? He said, How can I understand someone unless someone guides me? He said, Philip asked uh, to come up here and, and, and to sit with him. The place in the scripture which he read, of course, he was led, he was led as a sheep to the, sh to the slaughter. As a lamb before the, the shears is silent, so he opened his mouth. He opened not his mouth, and his humanity and humiliation, his justice was taken away, and all declared his generation for I, for his life is taken from the earth. So the eunuch answered Philip and said, I, I ask you, he said, Wh whom's this prophet talking about? Is himself or some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth, beginning to this, at the scripture, preached Jesus to him. Now they went down to, to the road, and as they came to a, a place of water, the eunuch said, See here, what, what hinders me from being baptized? Verse 37, Paul said, or Philip said, If you believe in your heart, number one, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, so he can, then he commanded him that he could be, they could, uh, be baptized in water. So it was a condition. Being baptized in water was accepting Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. We can, go, we can go to Acts chapter 10, to, to, to Cornelius' house. And we're not going to read all that, but Cornelius, Cornelius had a vision. And he said, was told to send away to Joppa for Peter. And, of course, uh, Peter went and preached to them. And, of course, Peter, as he preached on, we're going to start with verse uh, uh, oh, 34. 
Then Peter opened his mouth and said, In the truth I perceive that God shows no partiality. Because up to that time, there's only Jewish people. There was no Gentiles yet in the, in the church. But in every nation, wherever fears God, works righteousness is accepted by him. The word which God has sent to the children of Israel, preaching peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. The word you know which you will proclaim to you throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached, which is repentance of sin. Now God, God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all these things which he did both in the land of Jews and in Jerusalem, and they killed and hanged him on a tree. And him God raised up on the third day and showed him openly, not to all people, but, but uh, witnesses to those who were chosen by God. Let's keep on going down. I want to, you, can read, you should read the rest of it but for sake of time. Let's go to verse uh, 44. While Peter was yet speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came upon those who heard the word and those who were circumcised and those uh, who believed were all astonished for many came and, and preaching the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles as he was for they heard them speak with other tongues and 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 and, and magnify the, and magnify God. Then Peter said, "Can anyone then forbid water these from being baptized in water?" So they got born again. They got the the third baptism, which is the baptism in the Holy Ghost, before they got baptized in water. So again, if people see what God says in His Word, water baptism is not the means of salvation. Water baptism is correct. The new birth is first. In fact, if you're going to believe anybody, Mark 16, 16, Jesus said, those that believe and are baptized. That's a condition again. Well, that should be, but see, the church world, as, as men have changed things around, and this is the way we see it, and this, God is changing now, doing a different thing. Eh, no. Salvation is still only one way. Through Jesus Christ, there is no other way. It's not knowing about him or I've heard of him. It's knowing him. When you know the truth, the truth will set you free. But whom the Son has set free is free indeed. If you don't know the truth about what salvation really means, of course, that word saved is sozo, and the word salvation is satoria, two Greek words. They mean healed, delivered, restored. It also means the new birth. Now, if you go to a most Baptist churches, They'll say, are you saved? Well, see, actually what they're asking, they don't know it. Are you healed? Are you delivered? Are you restored? See, they have one word, they think, just the new birth. Well, thank God, the new birth is part of it. It is part of it. But that's not all of it. But see, when you only teach part of the gospel, that's why we call ourselves, well, one thing, full gospel. We teach the fullness, not partial or limitation of the gospel, but line upon line, precept upon precept. There has to be a foundation for what you believe in. If not, you're unsure. You waver. You're not, it's like when you, when you pray about certain things. If you're not sure it's God's will for you, then you're going to waver because you're, your mind, remember, the, the battleground is in the mind, 2 Corinthians 10, 4 and 5. If the devil can confuse you and give you doubt and unbelief, those thoughts will come to your mind. If you listen to those thoughts, then eventually you'll act on them. I believe it's Proverbs 26 and 7. As a man thinketh in his heart, so he is. If you keep thinking that way, that's what you'll become. But if you think the way God tells us to think, and most, see, again, Isaiah, <clears throat> do it a little differently here, but Isaiah 55. <clears throat> I'm, I'm going to back way, I'm going to back way up here because what I would usually do it. Uh, Verse 6, Isaiah 55 and 6. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake the way, let and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord, and he will have mercy on him for, and, and to our God, and he will abundantly, abundantly pardon. Verse 8, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. And too many Christians have stinking thinking. But if your, your thoughts aren't godly thoughts, according to what God's word is and God's ways, it's contrary to God. Nor your ways my ways, says the Lord, for as the, if as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways and your ways and my thoughts and your thoughts, says the Lord of hosts. As the rain comes down from heaven and snow from heaven does not return, but waters the earth and brings forth bud, that may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. 
I love this verse. So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void or empty without agreement, but shall accomplish whereunto I please, and it will prosper in whereunto I send it. So when you and I receive the word of God, accept the word of God in any area, and we're concerning about right now, whatever it be, healing or whatever area God has provided for us. When you know God has said it, Father, I thank you that belongs to me because the word, your word declares this belongs to me. Jesus paid that price for it. Therefore, according to your word, that I accept your word. I am in agreement with your, what your word says concerning healing or prosperity or deliverance, whatever it might be. Therefore, your word can't return to you void, but I'm agreeing with your word. Therefore, we're, we're in the power of agreement, just the two of us. I agree with you, Father, and I agree with your word. I agree with the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, in fact, I think it's Psalm 33, 11, God says he'll cause his thoughts to be to a thousand generations. So you have the ability to have the mind. Well, 1 Corinthians 2, 16. We have the mind of Christ. Philippians 2 and 5. Allow the mind that was in Christ to be in you. You have to allow it. 2 Timothy 1.7. God has not given you a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. Sound mind. So by putting God's thoughts into our thoughts, we'll start thinking the way God thinks. We won't have stinking thinking. And, and uh, <clears throat> so we'll start to understand when God says, this is the way God says it's supposed to be done, that's the way we'll do it. Not the way some man has ordained it. Some man says, you got to do this, you got to do that. No, no, no. It's what God says. That's why I've said, from day one, when I started teaching, no matter where it was at, you need to check upon me. If I'm not teaching the word of God, you better throw it away. Some people accept everything they hear. No. I have an obligation to teach and preach the word. You have an obligation to check it out. If it's true, then it's between you and God then. I've done my part. I can't make you believe. I can't make you receive. God won't make you believe and God won't make you receive because you're a free moral agent. So what you and I do with the promises of God, 2 Corinthians says all the promises of God are him or yes and him, amen, not yea, not yea and nay. So God's not a man that he should lie. God doesn't lie. God can't lie. It's impossible for him to lie. Therefore, if he can't lie, we know we have truth because the word of God, Jesus said in John 17, thy word of God is truth. And we also, we know the Holy Spirit's also called the spirit of truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John 10, 10. He said, I'm the door. You can't go around him. You can't go over him. You can't go under him. You have to go through him. Through him. How do you get through him? By receiving him. By receiving him, Galatians chapter 4, you become an adopted child of God. God places a new spirit within us. Therefore, we are sons and daughters of the Most High God. We have blood covenant rights. We're under the blood. The blood for salvation, the blood that protects, the blood that delivers, the blood that heals. It's in the blood. See, people in the Eastern world understand blood covenants. People in the Western world don't quite understand what blood covenant means. But a blood covenant is supposed to be till the death. I haven't taught for a while, it's been a while, but I've taught before on the nine steps that Jewish people make when they go into covenant with each other. Or if you go to Africa, they believe in blood covenant too over there. Of course, there they drink the blood. But I ain't doing that. But anyway, <clears throat> but when you understand what I, but see, we've never been taught. This should have been taught in the churches all the way through because it was until after 300 AD. There's only one way to get to God. It's, through, it's not what Constantine made it mandatory that you get baptized in water, or you're a Christian, or you're going to be, you're going to die. Mandatory. You didn't have a choice. That's not salvation. Water baptism wasn't salvation to begin with. It's like when I come to getting jabbed with a needle. That should be your choice. These people that fuss about my body, my choice, they didn't say a thing about being jabbed. 
Not only that, that baby is not her body. Thank God for the was passed to the Supreme Court. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. And all, all these people are throwing all these tantrums. <clears throat> They're going, and I, I suppose a lot of them call themselves Christians. <clears throat> but anyway, if they found out what, the, what the, the, judge, the judge declared, he said, when he wrote it out, in the fine print and everything, he goes back to the states. Some states, 15 states already have already made it illegal. But there are some states that will make it legal, like no matter what, California, the governor of Minnesota says it's going to be that way no matter what. Uh, the, the, what's, the, what's the law guy in D.C. under? Attorney General. Attorney General? Yeah. He's going to do everything in his power to reverse it. <laughs> reverse it. Biden, Biden threw a fit. But back in 1980s, he said that abortion was wrong. That's, that's strange how things change. But see, God is always constant. People wonder why there was judge, why judgment has come upon this country. Very easy. Very easy. You take God out. You kill little babies. You promote homosexuality. God says that's, that's what destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. God, see, there's got to be a cleansing. In fact, God said in the Old Testament, if you do these things like the homosexuality, he said, the, the ground will vomit you out. You're gone. And I won't. That's why when he told Israel through Moses, if you do what I say, my angel will be before you. No man can stand against you. But if you disobey and rebel, don't heed my ways, I'm not with you. I'm not with you. Moses had to plead with God on Mount Sinai. He said, I'm not going with these people. You take them. He said, no. God, most, so Abraham had to plead for, for uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. He only got to 10. He'd be to quit. He, he quit at 10. He, if he got down to one or two, he, God would have spared it for a time. But then we, then we see Moses petitioning and, and interceding for Israel. He said, if you don't go with us, we're, we're not going to make it. Because he said, I'm, I won't send my angel either. So one person interceding with God, whatever we have to keep doing for this country, this was dedicated to God. This country belongs to him, not to the devil, not to anybody. It belongs to Almighty God. Hello. I don't even know where I'm at here. In, oh, yeah. Because from the time when they got so mad at Jesus numerous times, and you can go back and read all the scriptures, but if you remember back in, in uh, Mark chapter 3, Starting with verse 1, the man was in the temple there with a shriveled up hand. And uh, Jesus said, is it right to do good on the Sabbath or evil? They wouldn't say a word. And he goes on to say, Jesus was angered at them. They knew what was available. Jesus said, stretch forth your hand. But from then on, they kept finding ways to try to get to destroy Jesus. You can go to Luke chapter 10, verse 13. The woman was bowed over for 13 years. Jesus said, woman, you are loose. When he said loose, that spirit left because she was bowed over by an evil spirit. Then he laid hands on her and she was raised up. The priest gets mad. You have six days a week. He had 18 years. Why? Because when Jesus, in fact, real quick, Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4, verse, verse uh, of course, remember what happened in chapter 3 there towards the end there. <clears throat> after he got baptized in water and came up out of the water, he's baptized in the Holy Ghost. Jesus didn't do one miracle until he was baptized in the Holy Ghost. And he tells us to do that. And, of course, we know he was led by the Spirit. The will will learn to be tempted by the devil 40 days and 40 nights he fasted. And, of course, we know what happened there with all three. We're just going to go to verse 23. <clears throat> And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of diseases among the people. His fame went throughout all of Syria, and they brought to him all sick and all who were afflicted with various diseases and torments and those who were demon-possessed, epileptics and paralytics. He healed them. Uh, great multitudes followed him. Okay, now, Exodus 15, 26. That was a covenant 
of God to Israel. I am the Lord, the great physician, Jehovah Rapha. Healing belonged to Israel. You can go back even if they had leprosy. The leper had to go to the priest. The priest would examine it. If it was leprous, he was put away. But then you'll find out later on, you keep on going. When he was healed, he had to go back before. I mean, there was healing. But yes, there was healing. Healing was in their covenant. That's part of their covenant. I'm the Lord that healed thee. Exodus 23 and 25 and 6. If you serve the Lord your God, I'll bless your food and your drink, and I'll take sickness from the midst of you. And the number of your days will fulfill. Number, none shall be barren. None will have miscarriages. Hello? Psalm all three. And verse three. Who forgives all your sins. Who does what? Heals all your diseases. Didn't say a few. Didn't say a couple. He said all. A-L-L. -L. That's all inclusive. Nothing's left out. That's why I believe it's in Deuteronomy 28, 61, where it talks about the curse. The first four, 14 verses of Deuteronomy 28 are the blessings of Abraham. And remember, we're a faith of Abraham. Blessings belong to us. 15 through 68 is a curse. 61 says every sickness and disease that's not even named is a curse. Galatians 3, 13. Christ became a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is anyone who hangs upon a tree. Verse 14, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles through faith, they might receive the promise of the Spirit. Verse 29, if you're Christ, you're Abraham's seed, and you're what? You're an heir. You're an heir to all the promises because they're all yes and amen. Every promise God made to Israel, amen. Plus all the promises that come through the New Testament, we have their combined. We have we have a Hebrews eight six a better covenant, not a lesser covenant. But yet you you go to churches and they don't preach the good news. They don't preach that healing is for today. They don't preach that deliverance is for today. They don't preach that prosperity is for today. They don't preach preacher is supposed to be the head, not the tail, the above, not the beneath. They don't teach that. They don't teach you're supposed to follow God and obey all His ways. Well, we don't want to offend people because we have our numbers. I still remember up in Rockford, two churches were fighting who was going to be the largest. <laughs> All they want is numbers and money. Yes, you want a church to grow, and church should, should grow. It's scriptural. But the most important thing is the word of salvation is put out. The people hear the word, the good news. That's why the people came by the multitudes to hear Jesus because the priests weren't doing what they were supposed to do. What are the mainline churches supposed to do? They're not doing. I don't care. People might get mad. I don't, it don't matter to me. People got offended at Jesus. Here you go. Mark 3, 21 and 31. His own mother, brothers, and sisters thought he was nuts. These different translations. They always deranged. Why? He was healing the sick and raising the dead, casting out the devil. That's, that's, not, that's not normal. Because that wasn't being done during their time. You read verse 31, it says his mother, brothers, and sisters were to get him out of the house. They wanted to take him away. Because he was, as my mother used to say in German, thrift in the coop. <laughs> that means you're nuts. I didn't know German. I, she taught me a couple of words. I said, I don't know. Sit him and know your birds now. But anyway. So if people are doing what they're supposed to do, preaching the good news, the good news is you don't have to go to hell. The good news is healing belongs to you. The good news is all the blessings of Abraham, all the blessings of God belong to you and I because God has provided. He wants his children blessed, healthy, wealthy, and wise. And I'm not, I don't, I got to close. I don't have time, but again, people, again, they don't know what the lifespan or longevity of a Christian is supposed to be. It's in the Word, but every time I, if I t t tell people certain things about long life, minimum age 120 years, that's, that's under the Old Covenant. 
in, in, in Genesis 6, uh, 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 6 and 3. Because in one translation, it does say that's minimum age. Well, when I say 120, what do you think about? Home. Nursing home. <laughs> Not knowing, can't doing, can't walk, can't hardly talk. No. Moses was 120, he died. He, he wouldn't have died then if he hadn't sinned. He climbed a mountain. Climbed the mountain. Abraham would be 175, Isaac 180. I think uh, Jacob was 147, 37, 47, I believe. Anyway, long life. But see, there's ways the, the uh, science doesn't understand because your body reproduces new cells every seven years. Why do we age? It's called the curse. But there's things you and I can do to slow that down. Even medical doctors are finding this out now. If you do certain things, eat in certain ways, Take care of yourself. Yeah. You can slow that process down. I haven't taught this for a long time, and I won't teach on it today, but there's certain things we should not be eating. You can, do, you can eat whatever you want. But God says these things are not healthy for you. If God says they're not healthy for you, there must be a reason. So you, you take it up with God. But that's <laughs> We're on the new covenant. I know, I know. <laughs> well, we'll take up our communion I guess now and again communion is a sacred thing with the Lord he instituted it uh, it's some, not something we do just haphazardly or it's just something traditionally done and for years I didn't understand communion because we did it uh, back when we were in the Catholic Church we went every, every time we went to church provided one to communion or confession beforehand but uh it was a religious ritual in a lot of churches. Some churches do it once a month. That's what we used to do years ago before the uh, uh, pandemic. But then I realized we, should, we can be doing this every day, every week. In fact, I believe Brother Copeland takes communion every day, him and Gloria. Before they get in a plane to fly off somewhere, they take communion. Yeah. So it's not just something whatever, but something very special. I mean, it's a, it's a covenant meal. 1 Corinthians 11, 23, Paul said, I received from the Lord, which I also delivered to you the night, same night in which Jesus was betrayed. He took the bread after he gave given thanks. He said, take heat. This is my body, which is broken. I should say whipped and beaten or purged horribly for, your, for our sins, sickness, sickness. And same manner, he also took of the cup and after supper, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. And this do as often you drink it, drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Therefore, Anytime you find it there for you, find out what's there for. Whoever eats this bread and drinks of this cup in an unworthy, Lord in an unworthy manner drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. So the only stipulation, first of all, we pray, First John 1, 7 and 9. Well, first of all, I should say, you have to be a believer. Secondly, we pray, confess our sins. Let a man examine himself and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. This reason many are sick, many are weak, many die young. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. So, Father, <clears throat> Father, we thank you for the blood covenant. Father, we thank you that we don't have to go to a high priest and, and bring an animal sacrifice. Father, we thank you that Jesus Christ is our Passover lamb. He paid that price once and for all. So, Father God, as we come before you, said if we confess our sins before you, you're just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So, Father God, we confess our sins to you right now, Father, in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus, that these sins are now totally abolished or destroyed. It's not the atonement where it's a covering like it was in the Old Testament. These sins are totally abolished. They're, they're destroyed. There's nothing there. And Father God, your word says you remember our sins no more. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And your word also says by the blood of Jesus Christ, we should have no more sin consciousness. So, Father, we thank you and praise you now that our sins are forgiven. We thank you, Father God, we're back in right standing with you so we can partake of the covenant meal, Father, now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, so she took the bread, lifted it up. Dear Lord Jesus.
the torture, the torment, the pain, the suffering, the agony you went through just out of love. As they beat you and whipped you with that scourge so horribly, we thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, that you provided healing for us because you provided that we accept everything you did, Lord Jesus Christ, by your bruised, broken body. So as the body the bread was broken, you said, this represents my broken body, so all partake. In like manner, he took up the cup, said, this is the cup in my blood. Dear Lord Jesus, we know this represents your blood. Father, as we put your remembrance, we thank you, Father God, for the blood covenant. We thank you, Father God, now because we're joint heirs with Jesus Christ. That we're washed in the blood. We're cleansed in the blood. Father God, we want to thank you for the blood covenant we have with you, Father God, through our Lord Jesus Christ. We're now sons and daughters of you, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' glorious name. And Satan, we know you're not here, but take your hands off of God's blood covenant people. So in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we all partake. Uh, and I, before we take, we'll take up our tithes and offerings, but before, I, before we close today too, though, anybody that's watching on YouTube, you can receive healing right there. I've received healing by watching Brother Copeland or, or one of some other people, evangelist or minister. On. I had a need. They prayed. I received it. It was there. So, I mean... You don't, you don't always have to be in the presence to receive because the Holy Spirit is everywhere. Tithes and offerings. Please, okay. And as, as we as, uh, we always read in Malachi chapter 3, but also uh, I'm going to encourage people to read also in, in uh, Hebrews starting with chapter 5 going through verse 7 especially. Jesus is now our great high priest in the office, he's office and order of Melchizedek. He's not only a Savior, Lord, healer, redeemer, deliverer, baptized, and Holy Ghost, soon coming King. He's also our great high priest who ever liveth to make intercession for us. Hebrews says, He liveth, He's there that liveth to receive tithes and offerings. So when we bring our tithes before the Lord, He worships our Heavenly Father in our giving. Amen. So, Father, your word declares in Malachi, you said, Where would a person would rob you by not bringing the whole tithes and offerings? Father, your word says, And their curse would a curse. And you said if we would do, be obedient to you, Father God, your word totally declares that you'd rebuke the devourer for our sake. We'd be the head, not the tail. We'd be prospering, Father God. We'd be known by all nations, Father God, that, uh, of your power. So, Father God, we bring our tithes and offerings before you now in the name of Jesus. Father, we bring the seed, but Father God, we thank you, Father God, we're obedient sons and daughters of God. We thank you for every opportunity we have to give. Because your word says, give and it shall be given back unto you. Good measure, pressed down. Shaking together, running over, swimming it back into your bosom. So, Father, we want to thank you, praise you for it now. In Jesus' name, amen. And, and, and again, if, if anybody hasn't been baptized in the Holy Ghost, it's, it's available for you right now. And if you don't want to be prayed for here, we can do it privately. But if you don't have, the Lord, Jesus says, he's not only a Savior, healer, deliverer, redeemer, He's also a baptizer in the Holy Ghost. So if you don't have the baptism, it's available to you. All you have to do is be born again, child of God. You don't have to pay a price for it. It's already been paid. It's already been paid. Thank you, sir. Heavenly Father, as we bring the tithes and offerings before you, as Jesus took the five loaves and two fishes, Father God, we lift us up to heaven. Father God, we ask you now to bless us, seed that is sown, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father God, we thank you for causing a rich, full, bountiful harvest. Satan, take your hands off their seed and off our harvest in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And ministering angels, we can loose you to go out and command you to cause the harvest to come in off our tithes in Jesus' name. And when they when they finished, Jesus finished praying, they took up 12 baskets. When he fed 5,000 men out of clean women and children. So, Father, we thank you. You're the God of multiplication addition, not subtraction and division. So, Father, we thank you and praise you for it. Now it's done in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So, Father, we just lift up every person to you within the sound of my voice. We ask you to bless every person, Father God, now in Jesus' name. Touch them, top of their head, the soles of their feet. Make them heal, sound. Whole and complete, Father, in Jesus' name. You're dismissed. Whew.